Uh, thanks, Brian. Afternoon, all. Thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, most appreciated. Uh, before I go through the 17 players, I'd, I'd just like to say uh, all 25 players that we've had here uh, over the last four or five days have all put forward a, a very good case for inclusion. Un unfortunately, we've had to find that down to 17, so there, there will be some disappointments, and there is some disappointments, there's no doubt. Our 17 for the Qantas Ashes Tour is Tim Payne, Captain, Cameron Bancroft, Patrick Cummins, Marcus Harris, Pat Cummins is a Vice Captain, by the way, uh, Pat Cummins, Marcus Harris, Josh Hazelwood, Travis Head, He's a vice captain as well. Uh, Osman Kawaja, Manus Labashane, Nathan Lyon, Mitchell Marsh, Michael Nessa, James Pattinson, Peter Siddle, Stephen Smith, Mitchell Stark, Matthew Wade, and David Warner. Um, we've named 17 to give us the flexibility and the ability to freshen up our, our playing strength, particularly given that there are five test matches and two county games within a period of five or six weeks. Uh, it's been a tough task to reduce the squad from the 25 we've had on duty here in Southampton down to the 17-man group. And the players who have missed out are all desperately unlucky in our view. We've been in the fortunate position of having to decide in this instance actually who to leave out, not who to pick. Uh, something we've been trying to develop over a period of the last 12, 24 months uh, to try to bring back some depth into our playing ranks. By the same token, the players we have selected all fully deserve their places in this squad and we believe we have an excellent balance of, of quality in both batting and bowling. And added to that, we are very comfortable. We have a group of, of very, very good young people who will all give their best uh, for the Australian cricket team. We've had very good preparation uh, with eight of these players in the squad featuring on the recent Stray A Tour, so they've, they've well match hardened. Six taking part in the World Cup and, and there's three have been playing county cricket. So all of our players in this squad have had some uh, cricket and some cricket most importantly in this country in recent times. Um, we've also had a, a very extensive training camp here in Southampton uh, where the facilities have been fabulous for our requirements. We know we haven't won the Ashes uh, in this country for some time, probably since 2001, uh, but we believe the squad of players we've, we've chosen um, can change that run and give a very good account of themselves here in England. Uh, with that, I'm happy to ask, uh, answer any questions if you have any. Just uh, raise your hand, <coughs> if you've got any, I'll point to you. Trevor, it's significant that um, Cameron Bancroft, Steve Smith and Dave Warner are all back in the squad. I mean, uh, Cameron obviously did enough to help you that show them. Yeah, very much so, and, and they're welcomed back with, with open arms, there's no doubt about it. Um, Steve Smith and Dave Warner, they're very, very good cricketers, world-class players. Uh, obviously, it was natural that we would include them now that they're available again. And Cameron Bancroft, of course, has had a, a, quite a good summer here playing county cricket. Plus, he, he played very well here in uh, the recent game. Uh, you may recall going back to South Africa, he was also our leading run scorer over there before um, the action was taken against him. So that being said, was his potential selection in the frame a long way out? Were you always thinking about him? Always thinking about him, but needed to get our eyes on him because it's fair to say no one had seen much of him since his return. He played some shield cricket towards the end of last season back home, but more importantly, we wanted to see how he was going, in particular over here. Yeah, Trevor, you've got two guys who've made hundreds in Australia's most recent tests, and you picked three guys in Harris, Van Croft and Harris, who've never made a hundred between them in a test match. What's the rationale there? Yeah, once again, desperately unlucky, those, those two fellows. But, of course, with, with the three we've just spoken about coming back in, there was always going to be a squeeze on. Um, we're very comfortable with the form of Marcus Harris, very much so. He's had a wonderful uh, season last year back home. He's been in good form since he's been here. So he, he probably uh, got the nod over a, over a Burns in, in that area. 
and, and the same can be said uh, for the middle order area where Curtis Patterson operates. Uh, we have people like Travis Head in particular who's averaging 50 uh, in, in test cricket. Um, and then, of course, Marnus gives us the option of, of A, he's batting, but B, he's leg spin bowling. And uh, we thought it was very important to include him. Just to follow up on that with Joe Burns, he's been dropped probably about four times, very unluckily, where his mate runs just before that and he's been left out. Um, what's he done wrong that he's so quickly pushed out the door? No one's done anything wrong at all. I think it's just a judgment call on, on how people are playing at the time and what we think the requirements are. So he hasn't done anything wrong. And I think we ask all of our players these days, if they are left out, to just go back and, and bang the door down. A little bit like Matthew Wade has done. Uh, he's really made a good case for himself by scoring runs, and that's all we can ask them to do. But, uh, can we just pick one specialist for now in the line? You just spoke about Manus' energy for the ball, but are you actually looking at him as potentially uh, like, taking an alliance place in case of an emergency? Do you get spinner? Yeah, look, uh, that's, that's an interesting one. Uh, of course, we, we kept asking ourselves, are we really going to play two spin, spinners over here in England? And I guess we came up with the answer probably no, uh, and we thought it would be handy to have a spinning all-rounder or batting spinning all-rounder in the squad to complement Nathan if we wanted to go down that path. If anything was to happen to Nathan short term, we could contend with that. Um, but if there was anything to happen to him long term, of course we would have the option of bringing somebody else in. The batting order must be a concern to you, even as you sit here today having announced this squad. Can you confidently name the first six? for a test match, or is it still a bit up in the air as to whether it's Head or Wade or Labuschagne? No, I mean, it seems to be very unsettled. It has been, Jim, for, for some time. There's no doubt about that. Um, and I can't sit here and, and tell you exactly what it will be right now because we, we haven't discussed it. We'll, we'll contend with that when we get to Birmingham. Uh, the area of interest probably, um, well, everywhere is probably up the top as well. There's, there's conjecture there as to who will David Warner's opening partner be. Uh, and then the middle order. We'll, we'll make a judgment call on that when we get to Birmingham. Okay. Well, um, do you, uh, in terms of sort of Marcus and Cameron, do you envision the scenario where the three get two of the men, David Warner, and being the same top six? Maybe a possibility early on. That will all depend on Usman Khawaja's fitness. Um, he, he's still recovering from that hamstring injury. Uh, and if he wasn't to come up for the first test match, we, we may consider uh, playing all three. And how close was um, Alex Berry to, to make them a cut? I suppose if something happens to Tim during the test series, will um, Matt take the vibes on you and Yeah, very, very uh, tough question. Well, not so much tough question but tough call that one on Alex he's been in very good form as we saw in the World Cup uh, we know once again in the short term if anything was to happen to Tim Payne either during the game or what have you uh, we have two people in that squad that can cover but if it was to be a long term injury that's where Alex would come in and he's still in the country and we'd have no hesitation in calling him in further to go back there was I guess that he had to go home with post viral fatigue, sort of lost that momentum, I guess, by going through a continuity and then coming back uh, coming back here. Like, in, in, with that basis, you kind of need to make a small portray, right, to just sweep it. Yeah, look, it probably didn't help his cause going home. It would have been ideal um, for his preparation and to put a, a, a good case forward for himself to stay here and play county cricket. However, there was an issue there for him and, and no one can blame him for, for going home. Um, he came over here, scored 100, as did Marcus Harris. Uh, so it, it was a tough call, that one, as to which one would suit us best for over here. And in the end, uh, Marcus has got the nod. Have you seen a bit more of the number of defenders you've got in the yeah, it certainly does, and it's nice to have a sprinkling of, of right-handers there. And, and of course, with the inclusion of, of uh, Labuschagne, we've got Smith, we've got Bancroft. So uh, I think we've got a fair mix there now. Well, just on Michael Mesa, how do you see him playing in the Yeah, Michael uh, gives us a, a little bit of variety in that bowling attack. He's not a tall, fast bowler like the majority of them. Um, he swings the ball 
He uses the Dukes ball in particular very well, as you would see from his record back home over the last two seasons when we've used the Dukes ball the second half of the season. His performance of performances have been outstanding. Uh, so he gives us a bit of a point of difference there. Add that to the package he offers with his batting. Uh, he has a very good batting average, batting at seven for Queensland in his state, plus he's a very good fielder. So um, the idea of, of six fast bowlers, of course, as well, is to enable us to manage our fast bowlers as, as best we can, um, given the, the workload, this five tests, and, the, and even the county games in between are very hot in the heels of the, the final day of each test match. So we, we thought we needed the extra fast bowler there, and Michael fitted the bill nicely for that. Uh, whether he plays or, plays or not, uh, takes part in the Test match series, is in the lap of the gods at the moment. Sorry for my ignorance, but why is it a problem with left-handers? It, it shouldn't, be, shouldn't be a problem if they're the best players. Yes, they're, yes. They're, they're the best players, yes. and, and that's it, full stop. Uh, yeah. And the right-handers that are, are there are all there, not just because they're right-handers. Yeah. They're the ones we want there. But do you want to break up the lines of the bowling, or do you think that tends to be more vulnerable? That always helps, you know. In, in a lot of people's uh, eyes, left and right hand combinations are good at the top. Some yeah. people would disagree, um, but if they're the once again, they're the best players. They're the best players. Mm. Russian Jeffrey. Trevor, can I just ask about the conversation this morning? You had the guys who didn't get picked. I mean, is there significant disappointment, frustration, or they're not getting those conversations go? Yeah. They're, they're very, very hard for some of them because they were disappointed. But they, they also knew that uh, with 25 here, we couldn't pick them all. Uh, and some probably knew also or felt that they were on the line or line ball. Others thought they were a, a good chance of being included. Um, so, yes, there were some disappointments. And all we can say to them, those fellows, desperately unlucky, but go back and keep doing what you're doing try to improve your game and belt the door down. We can't say much more to them. It's just the way the selection has gone and desperately bad luck. Jeffrey? Trevor, given you've got some pass bowlers who are pretty handy for that, would there be any consideration of playing four quick sound the spinner at some point and have someone batting out the seven like Ben Patterson? Depending on conditions, but uh, at the moment that hasn't entered our mind. We would have to see how, how the series going uh, is going and the conditions that, that prevail at, at the time. Uh, just one, Trevor, in terms of the new thing for Test Cricket, the, the percussion subs coming in. So you, you haven't got a backup spinner in the, in the squad or in the regulations, you know, state by like, like. In the event that, you know, say, for instance, I can lie, you know, something like that took place, and do you have clarity on can you bring a fast bowler into it? No, don't have clarity, unfortunately. You know, I think they're still working through that, just exactly the definition of like for like, and that'll, that'll be an important one for everybody going forward, but at the moment I can't answer that. James? Trevor, everyone loves a number. And Glenn McGrath's number was 5 nil. Are you going to stick your head up and tell us what the score of the series is going to be? I would never do that, Jim. I'd love to, but <laughs> I would never do that. I think it's going to be a very good battle. I really do. You know, England are, are a good side. Um, with their middle order in particular, that seems to be their core these days. Uh, and then they, they will bat deep as well, so we'll have every respect for them. We think um, we've got a good squad that could really give them a run for their money, so let's hope that's the case, but I, I wouldn't like to make a prediction. Last couple now, Russ and uh, Jeff, last three, Russ, Jeffrey and then uh, Rob. Trevor, just on the captaincy, where well, you've known Pat Cummins and Trevor said, in the event that something happened to Tim Payne, who takes over, if you've got a preference there, is that coming to the next capital of the Yeah, I think um, at the start of last season when we decided to go with the two vice-captains, it was made reasonably clear that we weren't anointing anybody as, as the next captain. It, it was more to help Tim Payne uh, behind the scenes and do what a vice-captain does and rally the troops, etc, etc. And both those fellows have, have done a good job when they've been in that position. If anything was to happen to Tim on a day, uh, we would probably have to have to make a call on that. And at this stage, possibly it would be Pat Cummins. But you can't hold me to that because we would make a call uh, depending on who's playing. Pat's a fast bowler, as I've suggested before. Fast bowlers may not play every game, so we would have to make a call that on that at the time. Jeff, 
Yeah. Um, with Cameron Bancroft, he's been playing in the second division versus some of the other guys who've been making Australia A runs or test runs. What has he done specifically to push back in ahead of some of those other players? Yeah, well, uh, I suppose a it was it was that county cricket playing and just playing in the conditions over here. But I don't know whether you saw the way he played in this game out here just now uh, in very trying conditions. He's the type of player that we think we need in our Australian side. He's, he's tough, uh, he's enthusiastic, his work ethic is, is fantastic and, it, and it, he's infectious. So we need people like that, people who want to continue to improve their game and hard-nosed and tough. So this and he fits the bill. Yeah. What, uh... Very excited that he's back, if I can say that. He, he's been fantastic since he's been back uh, involved with the Australian cricket team. It's all credit to him to, to get back to where he is now after a couple of horrendous injuries that he's had to endure. Um, but he's a bubbly character. He, he's lively. He's bowling very, very well, and we're very excited to have him back in our squad.